Today on Studio 18, presented by Old Venice Pizza Company, Athletics Director Ross Bjork sits down with Senior Associate Athletics Director Michael Thompson to discuss Ole Miss Athletics Academics, the three things you need to know about game day this week, how to submit your game day feedback, and military appreciation. We will also be taking your questions, so email them at studio18 at olemiss.edu or tweet us using hashtag Studio18. Now, here is Senior Associate Athletics Director Michael Thompson and Ole Miss Athletics Director Ross Bjork. Good afternoon and welcome to Studio 18, presented by Old Venice Pizza Company. This fall, we're airing the show on the Wednesdays before every home game weekend so that you can get your questions answered by our Athletics Director, Ross Bjork. There's two different ways you can get questions submitted for the show. One is using Twitter and the hashtag AskRoss, or the easiest way is to go to OleMissSports.com and click the Ask Ross button at the very top of the page. Welcome to the show. Great to be back. One week. Two weeks in a row. Two weeks in a row. That's Love right. it. That's right. So we are uh, we're live from the from the main room, and uh, this is a special room that most people have not been in. Tell us a little, little about the, the room. It it, re it really is. It's a great setting, you know, to really talk about the history uh, of Ole Miss uh, athletics, especially around football. And the, the Manning family, you know, means so much to this institution, to our athletic program, to the to the football program. You know, Archie and Olivia. You know, they give back in so many ways, whether it's uh, Children's Hospital or whether it's, you know, academics here on, on campus or whether it's athletics. And, you know, so to be here in this room, I think just signifies, you know, greatness, um, signifies character, it sig signifies love for, for Old Miss. And many of the things in here are actually uh, personal items, you know, from Archie and Olivia and then Eli and Cooper have given items too. So this is all given by the Manning family to, to make this room possible. It, uh, it sets next to our FedEx Student Athlete Success mm -hmm. Center. It's here in the Starnes building. It's open on game day to our M Club members and it's just a great way to show off uh, everything that they've uh, meant to the university. So yeah, very, uh, very proud of this room and glad we could be here. Speed limit uh, 18 miles an hour. Yeah, it's, a, it is a, it's an awesome room to do this. Um, so just like last week, and just like we said we do every week before home mm -hmm. games, uh, we're putting out a three things video, right. and where you're you're communicating with uh, our fans about kind of the three most important things mm -hmm. that they can know about game day. And there's lots of different things to know about, but we've tried to make it really simple and to say these are kind of the, the three most important ones. And a lot of times as we go through the season, uh, we don't know what they're going to be until after we've had a game. Right. So this is a That's great right. example this week of, right. of of the first one being about um, fan feedback in general, mm -hmm. and then kind of the ways that, that people are submitting fan, fan feedback and, and promoting that. Well, you know, in today's world, you know, everything's instantaneous, right? <clears throat> and so to have uh, the, the ability to really get things in real time, whether it's a tweet on game day, whether it's logging into our website, uh, the best platform that we have is oldmissfb.com slash feedback. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you just go to oldmissfb.com, there's a big button on there that, that says feedback. And if they click on that, they can send in their, their issues or, or compliments too. Sure. We, we, we do like compliments we do. as we well. Do. But the, the thing that that does is it goes you know, right to, to your office, right? You guys log everything, you categorize it, and then we send it on to who's responsible for correcting you know, right. the, the mistake or, or the issue that, that has come up. And so to be able to deal with that in, in real time, you know, we, we received about 200 right, this past mm -hmm. weekend after the UT Martin game whether it involves the Grove, whether it involves UPD, whether it involves security, ticket takers, clubs, suites, we can categorize all those things and, and try to fix them. Yep. And, and that's our goal. You know, we, we, we have this saying that, uh, you know, we have followers, right, that invest mm -hmm. in Ole Miss athletics. You know, our job is to serve them. And so I think this is a great way to, to do that. So we welcome feedback, we want feedback, we have to actively listen, may not be able to solve everything, but at least if we're aware of it, then uh, we can uh, we can start working on it. Yep. There's probably no no piece of feedback that's too small either. That's right. Um, the one of the things that came out of the, the feedback, in fact, most well not most, but the the, the top I guess vote getter in the <clears throat> feedback was about unloading um, around the Grove pregame. And with an eleven o'clock game, it's always it's always a challenge right. because right. it just it just sets the clock right. earlier in the right. day. 
Um, but uh, tell us a little bit about, I guess let's, or let's at least set the record straight about, about Grove Loop and, yeah. and when it's going to be open. Yeah, you know, I, I, I started my loop uh, through the Grove around, you know, 10 after 8 or so on Saturday, and, and most of the tents were empty. There's only a few people, you know, in the Grove, you know, getting, getting set up. And so you didn't have that, uh, that three-hour window where the Grove was packed, you know, maybe for other games if the game was later. I think this weekend will, will be different. But that, that 11 a.m. kickoff, you know, I think has, a, has an impact on that. Sure. And so with all the construction happening, especially around the student union, on the backside of the student union, you know, Grove Loop, we have to close Grove Loop due to construction. And so the ability to have that open, is difficult because of construction and then we're looking really at a three-hour window right before game time where we have mm -hmm. to shut down access and it just becomes you know really crowded with pedestrians we have a construction impact and we have to make it safe and th that's really the bottom line it's not about we're trying to eliminate uh, the experience it's about being safe for pedestrians right. it's about managing the crowd that we now have because it's increasing you know every single weekend as we go through the season. So it's just really about doing the right thing. And again, we'll continue to monitor, we'll continue to evaluate, but it's a necessary step that uh, we just have to continue to, to have a safe environment. The um, Friday is September 11th. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess the 14 year anniversary of, mm -hmm. of those um, deadly attacks on our country. And, right. and it's, a, it's a, definitely a, a sad day, uh, but <clears throat> on the 12th, um, we're going to do something special um, for those uh, that have served us. Tell us mm -hmm. a little bit about that. You know, I think we all remember where we were, right, on that uh, September 11th day. I was uh, actually in a downtown office building in St. Louis, Missouri, about a 40-story office building looking out to the east and setting in um, a donor at Missouri's office, and we're watching the second plane, you mm -hmm. know, hit the World Trade uh, Center towers, and we're sitting there going, we have to get out of this building, you know. So I think we all remember where we were yeah. uh, on that day, and so then, you know, how do we remember that? You know, how do we uh, understand and continue to 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 really honor those uh, who lost their lives, but then who serve our country and protect our freedom? And you know, Military Appreciation Day weekend to me is special. Uh, every time we honor a military member at a game, no matter what the game is. They get a standing ovation. It gives you goosebumps. It gives tears to your eyes. We have to continue this. We have a great partnership with ROTC. You know, we're we're interacting with them really almost daily, in different activities, and so to do this uh, in front of 60,000 people to honor you know our veterans, honor active members, it's just the right thing to do. And, and that's our platform. We talk about our platform in athletics. We're the most visible. You know, what better stage than a football game to say thank you? you know, to our military members. So I, I can't wait to see all the festivities that we have planned for this Saturday and just a way to, to give back in, in a meaningful, impactful way. And then our fans can then say thank you yeah. in their way by, uh, you know, giving those standing ovations. So I think we'll have many, many, many standing ovations on, uh, yeah. on Saturday. It's going to be cool. It is going to be very cool. Um, so oh, the other thing I, I yeah. forgot, let me, let me jump in here is uh, we've been given a Purple Heart designation um, by the U.S. military to, to honor our city of Oxford and the University of Mississippi. And so we'll have that uh, presentation on Saturday during the game. That's a, that's a big deal to have the university honored for what we do in military sciences and ROTC and then have the community and how they celebrate our military and our, and our veterans. So to have that designation is a really neat distinction uh, between the city and the university. And it just shows the partnership that we have with the city of Oxford. Yeah, and we'll have ROTC locking the vault on the field, which will be a neat sight. That'll Absolutely. Very, very, very cool. Um, so tons of other feedback that, that mm -hmm. came through. Mm -hmm. we, we addressed um, one of them in the three things video, but now that we're kind of out of the three things video, um, any other improvements after the first game? Well, we've got some premium areas that we'll make some adjustments to, uh, especially in our south uh, mm -hmm. end zone club. We know we have to, you know, clean up a few things there that we got some feedback on, and that's a that's there's a lot of people up there, you know, about 1,700, 1,800 people, and so you know, listening to them and getting their feedback, that that's a main thing. I think our gates went very well um, in terms of access. The west side is way different with all yeah. that uh, room to to expand. I walked out there 15 minutes before kickoff, and you know, there was a decent sized line, but people were moving, you know, and I think as long as people are moving, I think people can can adjust. The cooling stations went very well. 
being uh, so hot on Saturday, one of the hottest games probably on record that we've had here. This weekend looks a lot better. Um, so one of the things that we're changing is the weather. Yeah, uh, we, 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 weather. we ask uh, for relief and yep. we're, we're getting it. Yep. So uh, if we can control that, then our, our powers are pretty strong. That's so. exactly right. But no, the weather looks great, and we hope it holds up. And so people will see just little things that we'll adjust. Uh, we've had some shuttle feedback that we'll, uh, we'll look to make some adjustments. Uh, ticket scanners, hopefully those are fixed. Uh, referee Mike had a little bit of, a, of an issue, and, and we're working on that. So just little things to, to make the game day better. Yeah, we'll be cleaning up the ribbon boards and some of the... That's right. Uh, top 25 scores and things like That's that. Right. Yeah, but little thing, a little clean up things right. that uh, that you can do in one week between right. a between a game. Um, so uh, it's also mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot going on uh, this weekend. But um, Rebel Run, Rebel Run is something mm -hmm. that uh, it started it started within the last five or so years, and it's it's pretty wild uh, to watch um, uh, the freshman yeah. run out there. I mean, it, do, do you remember first seeing it? I do. I remember. Uh, really the first, uh, I guess it was the first game that I was mm -hmm. here back in 2012. And I remember seeing all the students gathered on the north end zone and I, I stopped and we said a few words to them. And I mean, their energy level, I mean, it was off the charts. I mean, they were so excited to, to be able to run on the game field. Mm -hmm. And so to have that experience, you know, I think again, that's a way to give back, you know, to students is, hey, come on the game field, do your run, take your selfie, make sure you lift your knees so you don't trip. Yeah. Uh, th those are those are cool things to to have as memories, you know, for these students. So I can't wait to see it. Uh, and then the line gets longer each year, right? I mean, we have more students. It's the biggest freshman class, so the line gets longer every year of, yeah, it's, uh, it's of the amazing. Rebel Run. How long it takes? It's That's just, right. Just people just running. Exactly. So, um, it also is um, kind of caps off um, a, a week of racial reconciliation, mm -hmm. uh, which we've been doing now for right. for a few years and. Um, tell us a little bit about what that week means to, to us yeah. and why it's you know, important. We, you know, we, we have a, a history here, right, that, that we need to learn from and we need to talk about um, so those mistakes aren't repeated. Uh, we have a very unique uh, institute, the, the William Winter Institute, and Governor Winter, you know, is a, has been a leader in our state for a long, long time, really tackled uh, race relations uh, head on. Uh, with his education, you know, act, you know, back in the early 80s, and, and I've got to be close with Governor Winter, and I've got uh, two of the most cherished possessions since I arrived are two handwritten notes from him that are on my, the back of my, uh, my desk. And so it, it's just a great way for us to, again, use our platform of athletics, right? We have this big visible platform. Let's utilize it to make an impression, mm -hmm. and so people can learn more about the Winter Institute, they can learn that we're trying to do the right things every single day, that we're not afraid to talk about the history here. We're, we're open to that because we need to. We need to talk about it. We sure. can't run away from anything. We have to continue to make these things front and center. So the partnership that we have for Racial Reconciliation Week with the Winter Institute, to me, is groundbreaking in, in many ways and allows them to, to receive the recognition that they deserve for the great things they're doing and allows us to really have a tangible connection to doing the right thing. And that's the Winter Institute. So I love this partnership, and uh, we have a couple activities. Uh, one, we already had a luncheon yesterday. We'll do a couple things on, on Thursday. Uh, Friday night, we have a reception. We're giving a, a Trailblazer Groundbreaker uh, Athletic Award to uh, Peggy Gillum Granderson for all the things she's done here at the university. So just a lot of neat things, and then Saturday we'll, uh, we'll do some recognition on the field. So a, a neat way to, to again, to, to give back. And to do what's right, no question. Um, soccer and volleyball, um, it's, I mean, the fall is, is awesome. You kinda, you've got football on a Saturday, yeah. and, and you're, you're, you're bookending it with, yeah. with um, volleyball and soccer, which is just two great sports yeah. for, for our fans to watch, especially if they're in town for a football game they haven't been to. We win. had a great finish on Sunday with our, our soccer yeah. team, you know, winning on a golden goal in overtime. And I think I saw Rebel Rewards, there's like 130 points yes. available this week with a all lot. the, between volleyball and soccer and, and obviously with mm -hmm. football. So, you know, it's a great way to just be entertained, you know, yep. great high impact uh, entertainment. You know, we kick off SEC play uh, Friday night with, uh, with soccer against Kentucky and then a, a really good match against Louisville on Sunday. And then volleyball being back at home after going 3-0 and last weekend. So, you know, neat way to, again, just be entertained, you know, in our, in our beautiful uh, city and campus. Yeah, it's free. I mean, it's and the it's best free. family entertainment value that you can possibly get. Absolutely. 
So good. Um, let's get to fan questions. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna tackle two uh, today in the sake of time. Uh, from Twitter, we've got the facilities are state of the art. What are your what in your mind are areas that need improving moving forward? So I mean, kind of a long, I guess yeah. it's kind of a long term plan. There's so much construction yeah. going on. But. That's a great question, you know, and it's really hard to think about it because you know we're really pretty much set between now and 2017 with with projects. We'll be under construction until then. Um, but you know, we just added some new seats, you know, to our uh, tennis complex that people will see when we start playing a couple you know, rows of chairback seating. You know, long term wise, I really see uh, the baseball stadium experience uh, really being enhanced, uh, not only you know for our fans but really our players. Uh, our locker room, we need to double the size of our locker room. We need to revise uh, the player lounge, and uh, we believe we can add some seats, you know, right behind uh, home plate all the way down to the field and add a club section, you know, for those folks. We believe that uh, our weight room, we can build a weight room over there for baseball. There's a lot of things uh, player development-wise that we're really focused on um, that may not necessarily be long-term. It may actually happen in the next couple of years, but... Things that are not on the list right now, I think baseball would be would be one of those. Um, you know, I see probably a soccer uh, stadium expansion coming at some point in time, whether that's seats behind the goal line, whether that's an expansion of our bleachers, whether that's a canopy, you know, something like that. Um, I see softball, the same thing. You know, how do we sort of build out the top of our stadium, whether that's a canopy, whether that's more premium seating, perhaps, you know, things like that I, I see. Uh, but the big stuff, I'm not sure we'll ever do a $95 million pavilion, you know, in my lifetime. Right. We hope that thing, you know, stands for 100 years. Uh, football stadium-wise, you build in the north end zone. You know, what happens after that? Obviously, you can go up higher in the north end zone someday. Someday you could tear down the, the west side press box and build an upper deck on top of the west side. And so leaving room for flexibility and expansion, I think, is critical as we master plan you know, this campus. So those are just some of the ideas I think that we, that we look at long term. Yeah, I can't imagine um, that there will be a year where we're not doing some kind of construction. I, mean, I think that's just kind of the way it could be a small around. thing. Yeah. It could be as simple as adding those two rows of seats in tennis, you know, which is about a $150,000 project. Right. Could be something like that. Uh, it could be expanding a couple rows of seats in soccer. Yeah down the road. It's, it's little things like that. You're right. You're always it's doing constant. something um, in, in athletics. Uh, otherwise, you're falling behind. That's right. So. That's right. Um, uh, last question. There, there was a lot of hype and chatter about the new Grove and tailgating mm -hmm. rules last week. How do you think they work? You know, by all the feedback we've received, they went pretty darn well. Yeah. You know, I think if you look at Friday night, I think people got used to the time, 730, that mm -hmm. got moved up. I think the Grove, you know, driving through there on Friday, you know, was clean and neat, and we had trash cans that stayed uh, in, in the spots they, they should have. You know, so I think Friday worked very well. You know, you and I were, were texting on Friday night, and by all accounts, it was an orderly, you know, process. Uh, we'll see what happens, you know, for bigger games, and we'll monitor that. But by all accounts, Friday night went well. And then Saturday, again, it was the same Grove, right? There's not a bad spot, you know, in the Grove. And then after the game, what we heard was from our landscape services, they got in there about 7 o'clock, right? So the game got over about 2.15, mm -hmm. 2.30. You know, we had the three-hour window. That went very well. And then landscape services was able to get in there about 7 o'clock. And they said it was one of the cleanest times the Grove has been, you know, as they move in to, to clean up. And so I think, based on the feedback, based on first weekend, I think the new policies, procedures went very well. And uh, we got to maintain that, you know. So this week's a little bit later game. Yep. Right? Game will be over about 5.30, 5.45. And so, you know, no one, no, no one drove through there, you know, with a bullhorn right. saying leave. It was an orderly process. It was our fans and, and our followers did a great job. So I think we just have to maintain that. And that's what it's all about, right? Respect yep. and just doing the right things. That's right. And I think we'll, uh, we'll continue to have a great experience. Yeah, it went really, really well. Thanks, Charles, for being here. Absolutely. All right, stick around for a quick update on what's going on on campus this weekend, as well as the much-anticipated sneak peek of the season. Check out the episode tonight, 6 o'clock, on theseasonolemiss.com. Thanks to Old Venice Pizza Company for sponsoring Studio 18, and we'll see you in two weeks. This week on campus. 
Coach McRoberts and the Rebel Volleyball team return to Oxford when they host Belmont on Thursday night. Game time is set for 6 p.m. Then Friday, the team hosts a split doubleheader. First match is at 11 a.m. when they take on Buffalo. Then the nightcap pits in-state rivals when Ole Miss battles with Southern Miss. Game time is 5.30 and admission to all Ole Miss volleyball games is free. Friday night, Coach Mott and the Rebel soccer team look to stay unbeaten as they open up SEC play with Kentucky. Game time is 6 p.m. and admission is free. Saturday, Coach Freeze and the 14th ranked Ole Miss football team lock the vault again as they host Fresno State. Kickoff is slated for 2.30 p.m. and tickets are still available. Finally on Sunday, the Rebel soccer team is back in action as they take on Louisville. Game time is scheduled for 12 p.m. and again, admission is free. Don't forget to join Hugh Freeze and David Kellum every Monday night at Buffalo Wild Wings for Reb Talk beginning at 7 p.m. Now this fall, watch the best college football show in the country every Wednesday at Rafters on the Square. This year, the Emmy Award-winning show, The Season, will premiere its weekly show on the rooftop of Rafters located on the Oxford Square. Admission is free. Do you have a little Rebel? Then sign them up for the Rebel Kids Club. The Rebel Kids Club is the official youth organization of Ole Miss Athletics. Membership benefits include free tickets to select Ole Miss sporting events, special members-only invitation to events, and the official Rebel Kids Club t-shirt. For more information or to sign up, visit rebelkidsclub.com. Make sure you download the app for Real Rebels and start earning points and prizes just for going to Ole Miss sporting events. You could be the lucky winner to travel with the football team next year when the Rebels take on Vanderbilt. Download the Rebel Rewards app today by searching Rebel Rewards in the App Store and downloading. And finally, Ole Miss men's and women's hoops tickets are on sale now for the 2015-16 season. Don't miss out on the first year inside the new pavilion at Ole Miss. To purchase your season tickets, visit OleMissTix.com or call 888-REB-TKTS. Day of school. Glad to see these lovely people back on campus after grinding the whole summer. My first day of class, Mr. Whitehead. It was perfect. I'm done with classes already. Pretty easy day for me. You know we got pretty ladies walking around. <laughs> Great professor. I love taking his class, but it's this one Spanish girl. Uh, yeah. uh. Yeah. I say, baby, baby, hey, hey. I'm walking down the street, can I get your number? But I had my phone, I, I didn't have my phone, so I couldn't talk to her, so I'm a little depressed about that. Looking so good, baby, it's a beautiful summer. Oh, oh, man. Hey, you know what I'm saying, that's how we do it like that. Yeah. You know, get to see different faces instead of all football players all day. <laughs>